Hello again, it's Grace. I'm coming to you with another video uh, to tell you more about my weight loss journey in the hope that it will be able to help some of you in your weight loss journeys. <music> So today I wanted to talk about food um, because food and your nutrition is going to be the thing that determines whether or not you succeed in your weight loss journey. And I wanted to tell you about my journey with food in the hope that it will help some of you visualise some of what it takes to make changes in your nutrition in order to meet your goals for fat loss. So first of all, I wanted to explain a bit about my background with food. Um, I grew up in London in a Ghanaian household. Um, both my parents are Ghanaian and both my parents um, love to cook. Although my mum was um, the main cook in the household and she would cook us um, delicious um, homemade Ghanaian food every day. Uh, to be honest, I don't even know how um, she managed to have such dedication to doing that because she was working full time. But we enjoyed delicious, wholesome, home cooked food. Um, Ghanaian food every day and um, if anyone is familiar with Ghanaian food they will know that it comprises of a lot of um, stews, soups, uh, meat-based stews, meat-based soups and starches. Um, there's not, there does not tend to be a lot of vegetables involved apart from things like spinach or cassava leaf um, which are cooked in the stew and the stew tends to be started off cooked in a uh, fried, uh, on with fried onions, fried tomato. So these foods, although absolutely delicious and uh, wonderfully home cooked, uh, were quite um, calorie dense, especially in the volumes that I was eating them in because from a very young age, I was a child that liked to eat a lot of food. And I still like to eat a lot of food, but I've just had to change the way that I eat the lot of food. So I grew up eating um, these wonderful Ghanaian dishes. Um, and as well as these um, Ghanaian dishes, I also ate um, Western food. Uh, when I say Western food, I'm talking about your typical British um, standard diet, um, whatever that um tends to be when you think about what a british diet is i liked eating chips i liked eating sausage i liked eating um big fried breakfasts i liked eating shepherd's pie i liked eating uh i was gonna say spaghetti bolognese but when i'm thinking of that that's more italian however i feel like a lot of british people eat spaghetti bolognese so I, I was also eating these types of food as well as fast food from like McDonald's, KFC, whenever I could get those types of foods as well. So if you put all that together, what you have is basically a young person growing into an adult eating a lot of very high calorie density foods in large volumes because, as I said, I like to eat large amounts of food so fast forward to me being in a situation now where i was like that's it i need to lose this fat and i need to lose it for good i need to change my eating habits and i need to do it in a way that is going to enable me to eat in this new healthy way forevermore and at first, I did not have a clue how I was going to do that. All I knew is that I had to make a change and I was desperate to make a change. So I was going to find a way. And it just so happened that through all my research, because that's the first thing I started to do, I started going on Google and searching 
um, healthy ways of eating, science-backed healthy ways of eating. I um, would come on YouTube and listen to um, so many people's uh, weight loss stories and how they went about losing weight. And eventually, the things that stuck out to me were eating whole foods, eating low calorie density foods. These were the two things that were going to enable me to still eat the large portions that I wanted to eat, but eat them in a way that was going to help me to lose the fat that I wanted to lose. So when I talk about, let's talk about those two things uh, separately. So first of all, let's focus on the low calorie density because I mean, to somebody who hasn't heard that phrase before, that can just sound like a kind of like a buzzword, right? Um, but basically what it is, is there is a spectrum of food um, that we either grow, that we um, make and package um, that is sold in the supermarket, right? And in this spectrum of food, there are foods that you can eat a lot of for a relatively low amount of calories. And there are foods that, for example, broccoli. I absolutely love broccoli. I never grew up eating vegetables, but now I eat broccoli by the bucket load. And I can eat so much broccoli for a relatively low amount of calories. Like I could eat this whole bag um, that I'm showing you on the screen for only 270 calories, right? And this is from somebody who grew up eating no vegetables, okay? And then there's um, the other side of the spectrum, which is uh, foods that you can only eat a tiny amount of and still like the calories are extreme. So for example, if I wanted to eat some ice cream, I could probably only eat a few spoonfuls and I would already be at 300 calories. So I knew that the vast majority of my diet was going to have to be comprised of these low calorie density foods like broccoli, rather than these high calorie density foods like um, ice cream, for instance. So at first, when I thought about that, remember coming from a background of not eating any vegetables, that seemed like a really hard thing to do. I had grown up enjoying food and I still wanted to enjoy food. I did not want to be in a situation where I was either thinking about food all day long, hungry all day long, or eating food that I just didn't like because I knew that that would not be able to go forward with me in the future. So I really, really had to take the time to do my research. And I feel like I want to encourage um, all of you guys that, yes, although you're watching this video and I'm trying to give you information about how I've gone about losing this weight, it's really, really important for you to do your own research so that you can know for yourself and decide for yourself what is best for you. Because I feel like anybody who has been on a weight loss journey and really understands um, how life transforming that can be knows that it's really really crucial to make that journey personal to you you can see other people doing something and you may try out what it is that they're doing but until you can personalize it for yourself and make it work for yourself that is when you're really going to know that you're going to be able to carry something into the future so yeah so I'm really encouraging you to do your own research but for me anyway, I knew that low calorie density was going to be one of my best friends. And it literally has been one of my best friends. And I will say to you, like, if you're more, if you're interested in what I was eating on a day to day, I do have an Instagram account that I started when I first started my journey. And I was documenting there uh, on a daily basis what I was eating. And because of that, I'm so glad that I did do that because it has given a reflection of the evolution of my journey, the evolution of the foods that I was eating. Um, you'll see if you go really uh, far back in my feed in, on Instagram that when I first started, I was trying out a lot of different food that I hadn't really eaten before because I wasn't used to eating low calorie density. I wasn't used to eating whole foods. I was used to eating, as I say, a typical Western diet and then um, some Ghanaian dishes thrown in, 
Um, so it was a lot of trial and error. It was a lot of trial and error. And for any of you who, you know, know how to cook and enjoy cooking, it should be maybe an easy transition. But for me, um, I knew how to cook the things that I knew how to cook, but I wasn't really used to experimenting. I wasn't really used to trying to cook different dishes. So um, it made that journey a bit of a steep learning curve. But I'm here now and you can see that whatever I've been doing has been working. And so you will get there even if it is a struggle in the beginning. So that's the first thing. The first thing is to focus on eating low calorie density foods. And I've put some information in the description box to help you in knowing what types of foods they are. But to give you examples, I eat a lot of potatoes. I eat a lot of um, bulgur wheat, which is a substitution for me for rice, because although um, I'd happily eat rice, I don't feel very full when I eat rice. So I prefer to eat bulgur wheat, which cooks like rice and looks like rice and pretty much tastes like rice. So for me, it's a good substitute and it has a lot of nutritional value as well. Um, I eat a lot of curries, uh, a lot of beans, a lot of um, plantain. Plantain is one of my favourites and obviously plantain is like a huge thing in Ghana and I, I do eat a lot of it. Um, so you'll be able to see that if you check out my Instagram feed. But obviously, again, like I say, what people like to eat is so personal to them and I really feel like each and every person has to determine for themselves what their diet is going to look like what what they need to feel satisfied to feel full and to feel like they can take that way of eating into the future the other thing um that i spoke about was whole foods um now when i described to you what i was eating when i was growing up and as i was a teenager and into my 20s and 30s I talked about eating Ghanaian food. Now, Ghanaian food is made up of whole foods. Uh, the food that my mum cooked was all whole foods. Um, she bought the ingredients from um, the market or the supermarket and she home cooked those foods. Um, the issue that I had with eating those foods is one, they were high calorie density because a lot of the stews especially are cooked in oil it, and the volumes in which I was eating uh, this food in meant that I was taking in too many calories at each sitting. And then obviously with the Western food that I was eating, we all know that a lot of these foods are, although extremely delicious, very, very high calorie density and lack nutritional value. So of course, I was in a situation where, yes, I was used to eating in some ways whole food. However, it was in a very calorie dense way. And then the other side of my diet was completely non whole foods. So I had to change the way that I not only cooked, but also the way I shopped. So when I would go into the supermarket now, I knew that when I went into the supermarket, I was looking for foods that were either looked like exactly what they looked like when they were picked from the tree or dug up from the ground, or had the minimal amount of ingredients on the packaging. So I'm talking two, three, four maybe ingredients um, on the back of the packaging. As soon as you start seeing a whole ream of ingredients and some that you can't even pronounce and ones that are just made up of numbers, then you know you're not looking at a whole food. So I had to be aware of this when I was going into the supermarket and make sure that I was making sure that the vast majority of the things in my basket were things that I could, I knew what they were when I was looking at them and I knew what ingredients were in them. And as I started making these changes and cooking with these foods, I knew that I could still eat in the volumes that I was used to, but that I had was minimising the amount of calorie load that I was having or calorie density um, that I was having when I was eating these foods. And it's amazing how it, when you're very determined and you really 
you really have put your mind that you're going to make a change it's amazing how you will find ways and means to do what it is that you want to do and that's basically what happened i had loads of trial and error at the beginning i made mistakes i made dish dishes that were absolutely unappetizing and you know i just felt like am i am i am i going to be able to cook in this way forever but eventually I started learning how to mix flavors. I started learning the types of foods that I liked. I started incorporating some familiar foods, but cooking them in ways that made them less calorie dense. And I started to see progress. And I feel like taking those two things in a, into account, eating the vast majority of your foods as whole foods and um, eating in a low calorie density way go so far to help you along your journey and especially in the area of being able to eat larger quantities and helping you to feel full because I feel like so many of us when we go on a diet to lose weight um, or to really to lose fat we put ourselves in a position where we're feeling hungry all the time where we're thinking about food all the time and that is something that I did not want to deal with I really really wanted to be in a situation where I ate food that I liked but also when I ate that food I felt satisfied not only for half an hour or hour but for many hours after and the way that I found to do that was to eat whole foods, um, especially things like potatoes, as I say, the bulgur wheat. So and and also bulk up those things with the vegetables and the fruits, because all these things have so much fiber in them. They have so many nutrients in them. So not only are they helping you to stay on track with your fat loss goals, but they're also helping to heal your body and satisfy the th your body with the things that it needs to help you to have energy um just function well so yeah that's what i want you to take away from this video whenever you're thinking about making changes to your nutrition if you can think about eating mostly whole foods and then also um, lowering the calorie density of the foods that you're eating i feel like you really be on a good track and I'm encouraging you to go ahead and uh, look into that even more and do your own research on that and I'm going to provide as much um, information and resources as I can in the description box as well to help you along with that and also what I want to say is you know if you have any questions about if you go if you go ahead and have a look at my instagram and then you have any questions about what i was eating and why i was eating that way i'm really really happy to answer any of your questions you can just go ahead and comment on this video and i'll definitely reply so i hope this video has been useful to you and like i say if it has been you know give me a like subscribe if you want to keep hearing from me and i will continue to um, share my journey and hopefully we can all help each other along in this journey because I still have things to learn okay guys uh, thank you so much for watching this video I hope to see you in the next one